<clears throat> All right, so we got this review. I think this review goes over things pretty well. <clears throat> it covers the topics fairly well. Um, so I guess looking over it real quick, if y'all haven't looked over it, it might be good to sort of do a generalization. Uh, so remember, we did matrices, so you might have to know how to do some Gauss-Jordan elimination. If I'm being honest, um, I'm not particular about how you do these things. So if you want to do these things with technology, or if you want to do these things by hand, either way, uh, you should know how to do some basic operations on matrices. So we talked about those. Uh, you should know about inequalities. You know, there's like that one little rule we got to remember when we do inequalities. You got to flip it if it's a negative, right? Uh, where are we asked? Uh, give the intervals an increase and decrease. So you should be able to do that, giving intervals. Uh, if I asked you for the zeros or factored form, that might be another question I could ask on something like this. Okay. Uh, then we have some rational stuff and quadratics and factoring in general. <clears throat> so whether it has four terms, three terms, or two terms, you should know how to factor it. You should know how to take out a GCF from things. Uh, find the domain. So that's what domain restrictions. So two of these will have domain restrictions. One of them will be RO numbers. I'll give you that. Uh, so you should know how to find the domain. You should know the, the two main two main domain restrictions. Or there's a third with logs, but I'm probably giving you too much. So there's square roots. There's dividing by zero. And then there's the log restrictions that we had. So those are the three restrictions that you should really think about when we talk about domain and give you something symbolic. Uh, find the following for the function, the domain range intervals, increase, decrease, and extrema. So those are all things I could ask. I think this pretty much covers it, but just to cover me, uh, there, there is possible that there might be something on the final that's not on here, right? If we went over it in class, it's totally fair game for the final. I think this should pretty much cover it though. So don't let that freak you out too much. <clears throat> uh, I don't think there's, I could be wrong, but I don't think there's anything that's on the final that's not on here. Find the exact next level approximations of that function. Okay. Of X and Y intercepts. So you should know how to find the X intercept. You should know how to find the Y intercept. Uh, quadratic function, you should know how to find the vertex. Mm, you should know how to convert it to vertex form. Uh, you should know how to write an equation of a line of a parabola. Those are both things I could ask. And it doesn't say what form, right? So if you wanted to do vertex form for those, that would probably be the easiest way to do it. A diver jumps from a rock into a lake 35 feet below. This, so this looks like the throwing a rock off a cliff example or whatever you want to call it. The projectile motion. Uh, so we did a few of those. So it's an inverted parabola. So I could give you something with the parabola like that. Ooh, is there another one with the... Uh, okay, there is a max problem, huh? No. Okay. Oh, never mind. I didn't read that problem correctly. Yes, that's a max problem. Sorry. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so if we want to find the max of something, we need to find the vertex. That's one and the same, right? We went over that. <clears throat> so you should know how to find the vertex from this thing. I think that's kind of a rephrasing of like, this thing, right? Find the vertex. 
it's kind of a rephrasing of that problem, but with a bunch of words. So now we're going to take that same like math concept and put it to a word problem. And instead of vertex, I'll say the word maximum, but it means the same thing. So find all the asymptotes of the rational function. So you should know how to find asymptotes. You should be able to tell your whole from your asymptote. I don't think any of those even have holes if I'm looking at them now. Uh, the cost of operating a clothing factory is $200 per day plus labor cost, which is 85 per worker. Uh, create a function that describes that. So what sort of function would you use for 13? And I'm just kind of skimming them right now. I'll go back over them. I know I'm going over them quick. I'm just trying to get us like looking at what all might be possible. It's usually good to do a good skim over what you got to do first. So we have like a $200 down and then we're doing 85 per worker. So what kind of function would that be if I wanted to create a function? I don't remember the name, but it would be 200 plus 85x, right? Oh, okay. Sure. That'll get you at 200 plus 85x. What sort of function is that? Now, if we look at this symbolically, if I just gave this to you, what's the thing that defines it? We just have a first order. What sort of graph does that make? A uh, straight line? Or yeah, yeah, it's a linear function. That's it. I was just looking for the word linear, and you went all out. But that's it. <laughs> okay, so these. Do you want me to break this down with Gauss Jordan, or do you want to do technology? I guess is the question. Go ahead and break it down, please. Did I do that correctly? Okay, so I've got this. So do you remember the steps of Gauss Jordan? Yeah, it's been a minute, huh? Um, so you want to change like the rows and you want to get all your ones on the right side? Yeah, we want to get the one right here and then the zeros below it, right? I'm, this, below. this is my goal in this sort of order. I get the one first and then I work my way down. So if I want if I want to get a one up there, I think the easiest thing in what you're saying is just a little bit. swap the rows, right? Uh, so which one are you swapping with? Two or three? I would swap two with. Well, I don't know how we're counting up for up or down. I guess one is at the top. I'd swap one with two. Yeah. All right. All right. So like one minus two, top two minus. One, zero, minus one, minus two. So I'm swapping these two rows, row one and row two. Okay. So what's the next thing? I want to get a zero there. Two minus one. Uh, multiply. Hold on. By row one 
times negative two. And then, um, hold on. No, I don't remember. I, I think it is multiply row one by negative two and subtract uh, it to row two. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, that's what I was going for. This one, I got to do minus two times this one. So if you mess up somewhere, it's probably going to be in like one of these steps, right? Got to do minus two, positive six, minus four, minus 14. And maybe I'll write them out just for the first step since it's been a minute since we see these. These are the two things I'm adding together. I right, do minus two that road one. <clears throat> Multiply everything here by minus two, add it to this thing, which if we did things right, we should be getting a zero there, which we do six and a minus one is going to be five. Minus four and minus one is going to be minus five and minus 15. One, zero, minus one. And minus two. All right, so now what, what should we tap next? Getting a zero in the bottom left. Yep. Usually we, we, we put it out, though I can't speak now. Usually we read left to right, top to bottom. I think when we read matrices, it's like top to bottom, left to right, something weird like that, right? But well, the orientation is definitely a little bit weird, probably from what we're used to reading things. But we're only getting zero here. So I think, I think you said it, right? Minus one, row one, plus this one. So everything here is negative. So one minus three. Five minus five minus fifteen. And now this should be zero. Minus one times three is a positive three plus zero is three. Minus one times two is a minus two. Minus one is a minus three. This is minus seven and minus two gives me minus nine. Okay, so I'm getting pretty close. <laughs> the end is in sight. I got a one, I got a zero. I made this column, now where am I going? Next column over. Do I care what's up here? Nah. If I do row reduced echelon, I do, but right now I don't care. I want to get that guy. So what do I want to make this guy? One. I want to make this guy one. How do I do that? I think I got to divide everything by a five. One minus three. Zero. And now one. Oh man, are y'all gonna be happy with this one? <laughs> okay, so what's my next goal? Yeah, we're really close. I think there might be like one or two more steps. I get the bottom all zeros. I get the one, I go diagonal, I get the one, I get the zeros. I want to make this zero. How do I do that? You could multiply row two by negative three and add it to row three. Huh? You made this into a unit, so use that, right? Minus two row three, row two plus row three, sorry. Row three is what I'm doing. So that first row stays the same. I'm not touching it. One minus three, two, seven, zero, 
the same. <clears throat> and now we're doing minus three. So minus three times one is going to be minus three plus three is going to give me zero. So I'm going to get zero, zero. And what else am I getting? Uh, yeah, it is a bit weird on this one, so it, was, it seems weird. Okay. Well, that's going to be another zero, I guess. <laughs> it's going to be another zero, and what's this one going to be? I can't see the top of the thing. Let's see. Uh, so that's going to be a zero also. Okay. Swoosh. Hmm. All right. So we're getting nothing but zeros. What does that mean? All uh, real numbers? Mm. Or like no solution? I forgot. What's the equation? What is the equation that you're getting from this thing? If we write out the equation? Z equals zero? No, there's no Zs. All right, zero equals zero. Zero equals zero. OK. So what does that mean? It's not all real numbers, but it is infinitely many, right? All right, so this was those things we had to like uh, rewrite in terms of Z. So the first thing we know is that Z is equal to Z. We want to write a line is what it should look like. And a line in three space, we have to give three coordinates. OK, so what are my equations giving me? That's what's really important here, I think. What does this one give me? One X minus three Y plus uh, two Z equals seven. Absolutely. And this next one is giving me what? Y minus Z equals a minus three. All right, so we got to do a little bit of solving to solve for X, Y, and Z. So we want to solve for Y in terms of Z. So I think we're going to have to add the Z over. It's going to give me what? Z plus 3. And we want to solve for X in terms of Z. So minus 3. Instead of Y, I want to sub in Z plus 3 plus Z equals 7. And now I want to solve this for X. So maybe I got to do a little bit of distribution. X times 2z minus 9 equals 7. Add what? The 2z and the 9 over. 2z plus 16 is what this is giving me. So now I have to write these in terms of X, which is 2Z plus 16, and Y, which is Z plus 3, and Z, which is Z. So I get my three solutions, my X in terms of Z, my Y in terms of Z, and my Z in terms of Z. I think that's about as long as I can make a problem in this class. <laughs> I don't think they may let us make them much longer than that. That is a pretty long problem. Especially if you make a careless error early on, you have to go back and find it. May you um, go over how to get in the calculator real quick? All right, so in the calculator. 
I didn't mind in the calculator to double check. <laughs> like, oh, this is going to be an interesting one. Get the zero equals zero. Uh, okay, so if we do it in the calculator, I hit second and I hit matrix. This takes me to my matrix matrices. If I want to edit them, I have to go over and hit enter under the matrix I want to edit. So I want to do a three by four matrix and then you type it in cell by cell, right? You just type in your equation that you're getting. There's not gonna be a bar in your, in your calculator probably. If I wanted to recall it, this is how I talk about my matrix. Now it's like stored in there under A. So it's most, most everything that you do for the matrix is under second matrix. This is where we talk about our matrix. Those are the names. This is where we put in our matrix under edit. And then math is where you start actually doing the mathematical operations on it, right? So you, I think you can actually do, uh, what's it called? I can't even think of the name now. Gaussian. That's what I'm trying to think about. <laughs> Gaussian elimination. God. Okay. So uh, you can actually, I think you can do Gaussian elimination here with these row operations. I think that's what those are. That is cumulative sum. But if we want reduced echelon form or row reduced echelon form, I would go with RREF. That is the row reduced. That's going to give you zeros on top and on bottom. It's probably not going to matter too much on this one. You might get the same one either way because we're getting that zero equals zero. Oh, actually, it is a little bit different, maybe. So like one, zero, minus one. Is that what we got? No. Yeah, so it might be a little bit quicker if you do this with row reduced echelon form. It will save you a little bit of back solving like on this step, right? We won't have to put in anything for Y here. We can just go directly from X to Z, right? We can just write that equation a little more directly. Did I do that right? That number didn't look like it's coming out right. Did I solve that right? The Z plus three looks correct. Why does that look wrong? They're getting. Yeah, I did something wrong. This should be Z minus two, right? Where am I getting it? Oh, that's what I messed up on. Whew. This will probably change things. There's a coefficient of two there. Sorry. Does that change it? It's positive two minus three, positive seven. And that was just a row swap from that other one, right? Did I ever swap that row correctly? Hmm. One minus three, two, seven. So hard to find. One minus three, two and seven, because they're saying that one's Z plus three. And that is an equation we have. So if we put those two and two together, it should go together. Minus three Z minus nine. Oh, I'm off by a negative. It should be Z minus three here. That right, will fix it. And if we put in Z minus three here, this one should be Z minus two. We should get plus nine, plus nine. This one would be minus one Z plus nine. This one would be Z plus two then.
Minus half point. Okay. GZ minus GZ minus. We did all the matrices part correctly. I just apparently didn't know how to back solve anymore. Uh, would the test only have Gaussian or would it have other things like Gauss Jordan and stuff or just Gaussian? Uh, it's Stick to just Gauss. I don't want to give y'all too much. It's probably going to say solve this equation. It's probably what it's going to solve. And it probably means that you can solve it e any way you want to. As okay. long as you give me the solution this is what I'm going to be really interested in. You can use technology. You can use... Um, do it by hand if you want. If you use technology, you got to show me at least two matrices, right? You got to show me what you're putting in and you got to show me the reduced form that it's spitting out. And write a little note. Say, I use my calculator. Use technology, something along those lines. All right, so you want to do, how do you want to do B? You want to do that by hand or technology? Yeah, I'm going to try that. Uh, so this would be using Gaussian or... Or do we just pick what we want? Yeah, I mean, Gaussian Jordan is going to be extra steps, basically, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I'm still kind of fuzzy on it. I'm just. They're basically the same process, but Gauss Jordan has a few extra steps, I think. Let's see here. Someone... Okay. Plus y minus two. All right. So I got the one. I want it the zeros. I think we're going minus three row one plus what row two. So if I do minus three times this, well, this one stays the same one, two, one, minus one. I want to do minus three times that. It's going to give me zero here. Minus three is going to give me minus six. Plus one is going to give me a minus five. Minus three and a minus two is also a what? Minus five. This becomes a positive 3, and a negative 13 is going to be a minus 10. And I got 2, a negative 2, negative 3, and minus 7. <laughs> okay. The next thing I want to do is... Looking down the column, want to get that guy to zero. If you have a one, which you will, should have, right? You should use the one to get to your zeros. You use it sort of like a unit, right? I'm just going to go minus two, and this row, and I'm going to add it to that other guy there. So that's not going to change the first two rows. So I know like these matrices, they, just, they make you do an awful lot of writing. But the bonus side of it is a lot of it's just writing the same thing over and over again to keep it in line and in structure, right? Uh, so minus two times row one is going to be minus two is going to give me a zero here. It's going to be a minus four. Minus two is going to be a minus six. A minus two and a minus three is a minus five. Positive two and a minus seven. I believe it's a minus five. I'm looking here. I want to get ones and zeros. I'm done with that column. So I want to move over. I want to do the next column now. So now I want to do this one. I want to make it a one. All right. Divide by negative five. Divide everything there by minus five. Row two, I should say. Yeah, that's it. Minus one. Zero. I'm going to divide 
my money slide, which is one one and a two. All right. We got to get rid of the negative six here. So I guess uh, we could uh, like uh, multiply row two by positive six and add it to row three. Yeah, that's exactly what you do. Once you get the one, you use it sort of like it's a unit, right? Whatever this is. You do the opposite times that row. One, two, one, minus one, zero, one, one, two, zero. If I do six and one I, and minus six, I get zero. If I do six and one, I get six. And I subtract five, I get one. Ooh, excuse me. And the last one, I do six. And this is going to give me 12 minus five. Seven. Seven. Okay. Well, so we got Z is seven. Yeah, I usually like to do it backwards. What it gives it to you. Here, and it says Z equals seven. It says what? Let's see here. Why? Y plus seven equals two. Y plus what here? What is this one? Seven. Uh, because because Z is seven, right? Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I absolutely. Mean, am I wrong? No, you're right. You're just in the okay. next step. I'm just like. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. That's in my mind. I'm just. Uh, so we solve for Y is what minus five. And then X plus. 2y plus 7 equals negative 1. Alright, so. Let's see here. So y equals negative 5. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I got parentheses in this. X plus <laughs> closing parentheses with that opening. I mean minus. So minus three plus three should be what? Plus, uh, equals negative one. Yeah. Seven. All right. So if you gave me a solution like this, I would probably give you most, if not all, credit. But you really should do what with this? You should really put it in X, Y, Z form. Yeah. So we go two. We go minus five and seven. Okay. Is that what they're saying? In the back. No, sir. Cool. Two minus five and seven. That's it. All right, so how do we perform this operation? What's the first thing you should do here if you're doing matrix operations? The second matrix, shouldn't you multiply all those numbers by three? Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't forget your order of operation just because we're doing matrix. is basically what this is saying, right? Three, six, three, two, two, minus three. And I would highly suggest writing out your work here. I'm going to do three times this. This is minus six, minus six, six. Write out these little steps. I can tell you how many times people try to skip this. It just messes them up. It really helps you if you write out these little steps. <laughs> You're talking about nine numbers there. You're not going to keep nine numbers in your head, right? That's 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 gambling on a test. Don't do that. Did I get my negative signs correct? I think so. Yeah, that's it. Three six three two 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 minus two minus one minus four zero. Now, hopefully, we add these things correctly. Negative three. 
Yep. So we're adding corresponding entries. I'm glad I'm here. So three and six minus six gives me minus three. This one should give me zero, and the last one should give me. Do we see it? What's the last one there? Nine. Which one? Number nine. No, this one. Oh yeah. Minus six and two. Is going to give me a four. Two and six is going to give me eight. Minus two and six. So be careful with your negative signs. So two and a minus six is a minus four. Minus two and six is four. Minus one and six is a positive five. Six minus four is going to be what? Two. And the last thing I got here, I believe, is a minus six. All right. Questions about this? All right. What about inequalities? What is the thing we got to remember on inequalities? How do we solve triple inequalities like this? I don't even like the way they wrote this, if I'm being honest, but it's all right. They really should have wrote it in any other order. Just by convention, it doesn't matter. It's still mathematically correct, technically. So how do I solve this? What am I trying to get by itself? The X, I guess. I'm trying to get the X by itself. So what am I going to do first? What's attached to there? Do you divide by three? Ooh. First or no? We want to get rid of this three. How is this three being attached? I'm glad you said that. I think we have to divide it to like five and negative one. All right, so this is a three and how's it being attached to this X? What's the operation here? What's subtraction? This is subtraction. So I want to think this is being attached through addition subtraction. So what do I want to do with that three? Subtract it. I want to subtract it. So this is like maybe if you want to think about it, it's a positive three there, right? So how do I get rid of a positive three? I subtract it. I subtract it from the middle. Guess where else I got to subtract it? And I think you kind of said it, right? You got to do it from all three sides. So I'm going five minus three is giving me two. This is greater than. What is that middle going to be now? Now this is another thing we really have to be careful on because people mess this up. Negative x? It's the negative x. So sometimes people will just like leave off the negative or do something wrong there. And I take a minus one and I subtract three. Hopefully we're doing that correctly. They're combining in a negative direction to minus four. I have this. If you get this, you're about halfway there. It's about half the credit. If you don't do this next thing, definitely going to be quite a bit off. What should I do? What do I what do I have to do next? Don't stop here. Divide by negative one? Yeah, I have a negative in front of here I got to take care of. So I want to divide by a minus one or multiply by a minus one, whatever you want to do. Same thing. Whether I multiply by a minus one or divide by minus one. Basically, what that means is I flip the signs on everything. So this is a minus 2, this is a 4, and this is an x. And then we would flip the uh, signs. Uh -huh. So this sign flips that way. This sign flips that way. So if you multiply or divide by a negative, right? You got to flip the sign. All right. If I want to give intervals an increase, decrease. Oh, uh, so like increase would be uh, negative 
2 and negative 3. And uh, the other one would be uh, 2 and 0. So I want to look where this thing goes up and down, right? Yeah. And so, uh, what was that? We're only looking at the X. Um, yeah, so you just want to look at the X, only the domain here. So it, is, it starts at minus 2. And where am I going? It ends at 0.5. Yeah, it ends at like right here at a fraction, right? And it ends right here, right? So what I really want to mark is kind of like the the vertices, right? I want to look at the vertices where it goes from down to up or up to down. Where is it going up? It goes up from minus 2 to about 0.5. Is that the only place it's going up? No, it goes up from two to infinite. Yep. Also from two to what about my decrease? Uh point five to two. Yeah. I guess you could go. I guess you could go uh, infinity to negative two. Yes. What kind of infinity? Uh, it's it has well, it's positive because it's coming from the top. Uh, we're right? looking at x values. Oh, it's going from left to right. Okay, so that yeah. would be negative then. Okay. Yeah, we're going uh, x I was values. Is... Y axis. Yeah. Yeah. Long, yeah. So only look at your x values when you're giving me increase, decrease. Okay. Is it... Negative. You look at whether it's going up or down, that's the y value, right? We don't care about any of the numbers in the y value. All we care about is up and down. But we want the x values. All right. Any questions over anything I've done? I'm trying to get through most of these, hopefully. Uh, find all real solutions. So, again, this is like. I guess we could have split things up and made you factor things in one section, maybe do another thing. But this is basically sort of like factoring stuff, right? So if I want to do something like, let's do a 1 over x equals 3 over x plus 1 minus x over x squared plus x. If I'm looking at this, what's probably the first thing I want to do with these rational expressions? I want to find what? The common denominator? The, yeah, the least common denominator or the least common multiple between the denominators. And in order to do that, I probably want to do what with my denominator? This one, this one's got, got done, this one's done, but what do I need to do with this? Okay. Factor. And so if I factor this thing, can we figure out the LCD here is the next step. Between x and an x plus 1 and an x times an x plus 1, what is my LCD going to be? x times x plus 1? Yeah, it's sort of like we have to count for everything at least once, right? We have to count for an x. We have to count for an x plus 1. Oh, look, they're both together here. This one is the LCD of these two, right? So, all right, so after I found my LCD, there's really like two sort of ways that people do this. And they both get you to the same place. One's just like saves a little step. Uh, what am I going to do with that LCD? And you can do this when you have equations. It makes it a little easier. Do y'all like fractions that much? Uh, we can multiply by the LCD and it'll clear the fractions. Yeah, so we're multiplying by the LCD and all these things. And it should clear the fractions. So I want to multiply by an x and an x plus 1 here. And if you want to, you can put it over 1. 
one of the important lessons is that like, that thing is going to the top, right? I think I might even be able to simplify that one of them. Oh well, didn't do it. One, I think I get an X here and an X here. And so this should be giving me what? X plus one over here. I believe I have an X plus one and an X plus one. So if we do this correctly, it should simplify it. So that there are no more denominators. Now we have this thing. You think you can solve this thing after I get rid of my my fractions? This is a first order linear, so. I'm hoping so. We've seen a few of these. I think I'm getting x equals one in this. I subtract an x from both sides. Okay, am I done? So is this my solution? Yes. Mm, yeah, you're right. But what should I really do? And this is pretty important. When we have rational stuff, what should I do with this? This is my equation. I get the solution. Plug it in. I should really plug it in to make sure it doesn't give me a zero in the denominator. I can't speak. The denominator. I think it will be okay. I don't think it's giving me zeros in the denominator. The other thing you can do is you can check against your domain. I think my domain restrictions are x and not be zero and a minus one. Are coming from setting these things equal to zero. So we got one of these as a solution. We'd have to reject it, right? But I think we should be okay. This should check out three halves minus what one should give you one. Did I do that right? What did I do wrong? Uh, minus one half. All right, this one should be a half. Helps if you know how to add one and one still. Three halves minus a half gives you one. So that one should check out. It should be a solution. All right. So B, how do we factor B? Well, it's the first thing you should be doing when you factor something. Take out a GCF. Take out a GCF. If we're looking here, what's my GCF here? I think the lowest power of X I have is what? X squared? What happens if I take out an X squared? I get what? X squared minus X minus six equals zero. So we've done a few of these, but this is factoring. Do y'all know the factors for this thing? How quick are we factoring these things now? That's the question. Plus one minus six. Mm, I think you want to do two and three on this one. Because the difference should be minus one, right? Yep. I think if you do minus three and plus two, I think that gives you a difference of minus one. All right, so we want to know, we, you should be able to factor these things, right? And then what do we have to do to solve these? Solve 
So that each part equal to zero? Yeah, so you know that zero, that is zero, that is zero. This is zero, the next is zero, this is zero, the next is three. And then this is giving me x equals y at minus two. Okay. Oh man, I want to step back just one second. What if we want to do the factored form of two or, or four, sorry. If we want to know the factors, grab another color. What am I looking at to get my factors? The uh, zeros? I'm looking at my zeros, which are what goes across the x-axis. So that's minus three, zero, and And so what are my factors? If these are my zeros, my first factor should be what? X. Plus three. Plus three. X, if you want to say what, X minus zero, I would be okay with that. You could just say X. You don't need to put the minus zero. And then the last one is X. Minus two squared. Minus two. Yeah, I was about to just ask that. And then the other thing we got to look at is that it hits the vertex and then hit goes. It hits with the vertex and then goes the other way. Meaning that it looks like a square happening there. And what about my leading coefficient? Is it positive one or negative one? Positive one. Positive one. And this is what my function should be. So you're pulling your factors from your zeros. You got to flip the sign to get to your factor from the zero. If it bounces and hits it, it's a square. If it squiggles through it, it's a cube. If it goes straight through, it's just one. All right, so what do we do? A, B, now we're on what, C? So, I think the first thing we need to do is what? Get them all to one side. This X to the fourth minus X squared plus two X squared plus four. We subtract the two x squared, subtract the four. Oh, we got things that look in common. So this is x to the fourth minus three x squared minus four equals zero. We did something like this in class. I know we did it once at least. What does this look like? How do these two things relate? Yeah, this one's a bit tricky, I think. Anybody hear me? I can hear you now. Okay, thank you. I had to fix my audio. Um, yeah, so that's like a linear equation. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Um, what do you what do you mean by linear? Linear would be first order, right? Yeah. How does this relate to this? Perfect squares. Mm. Yeah, this thing is this thing being squared, right? Like an x to the fourth is like this thing being squared. Mm. So we did this before. But we can think of x to the fourth like an x squared squared. Maybe if I rewrite it like this, it might look a little better. 
or maybe it might look a little worse. I don't know. Uh, Did we do it like with a, a U substitution or something? Yeah, well, I think we did it with U substitution. So if I'm looking at this, what does the pattern look like? So if I do a U substitution, U equals X squared. Does this look like something that is solvable? Yes. Okay. So now this becomes a little bit simpler. If it, and the, the, I think the moral of the story is that like we can do things that are quadratics, but we can do anything that even looks remotely like a quadratic. If this thing is this thing being squared or this exponent is twice this exponent and we have no variable here, we can solve anything like that if we do a U substitution. And if we do the U substitution, as already going, okay, I won't spend too much time. You should know how to factor this thing. This is U minus four, U plus one, I believe. And if we solve this thing, U minus four is zero and U plus one is zero. This is going to give me u equals 4. This is going to give, give me u equals a minus 1 when I solve these things. And we're almost there. But we substituted u for x squared. We want to solve for x. So how do we solve for x? I turn it back into an x squared. Yeah, so this is telling me x squared is equal to 4, and this is telling me x squared is equal to a minus 1. Here, I would take the square root property, right? And if I take the square root property, what do I have to remember? Plus or minus. Got to do the plus or minus. If I do the square root, I got to do plus or minus. So what this looks like, it's giving me plus or minus two here. This is looking like it's going to be plus or minus i on this side. So how many different solutions are we getting? One, two, three, four different solutions. And we started with something that was quartic. So that seems about right. OK. Now we got another one that is set up in four terms. So if it's got four terms, what's the process for factoring them? So if it's got three terms, we do quadratic. If it's got four terms. We factor out uh, each pair of two. Yep, we pair them up and we factor them out. Or you do the box method, right? That's the other way to do it. And if we want to look here, we want to see what's in common. I believe they have a four and an x squared. If I pull out a four x squared, I believe it's going to be an x plus one. Here, I believe I'm going to pull out a three. And then what else do I want to pull out? A negative. Definitely a negative, so that this is an x plus one. And if I do it like this, I can factor out x plus one and my four x squared minus three. Okay. So to be honest, we could we could try to maybe factor this thing a little bit more, but I don't think I want to do that. I think I want to try to solve it now. So one of the options is that x plus one is equal to zero. What's well, my other option? Four x squared minus three equals zero. Yeah, I would do it this way because I know how to do these a lot easier than I know how to factor this thing. Okay. And so I would solve it with this and probably with what? The square root method, I think, is what I can do. Mm -hmm. I can add the three over. I have a four x squared is equal to three. I have an x squared is equal to three fourths. And then this is the thing that we are talking about previously. If I take a square root, Gus to Gus to do the plus or minus. And this is root three quarters. If you got this from the book, they probably don't like radicals of fractions. 
So they're probably going to split that thing up and tell you that we can take the square root of four, which is two. So they'll probably have root three over two. Questions about this one? These are a bit hard. <laughs> I didn't realize these are that hard in factoring. They're definitely giving you a run for your money on the factoring on these ones. But you should know the basic methods, right? If I got four terms, I fat group and factor. If I got three terms, I'm doing the AC method. If I have two terms, I have to look for those differences of squares. Okay, so now we're doing x to the fourth. Yeah, I don't want to do that one. Let's do f. Let's spend our time a little more wisely, I think. It says x to the third minus 25x. All right, so how do I factor this? How do I? Yeah, factor out of x out of it. Factor out of x. x squared minus 25. I mean, I suppose if you don't, x squared minus 25 can become uh, x minus 5, x plus 5. Mm -hmm. And if, if I'm being honest, we could do the zero product rule on that step, probably, and you could probably still solve it. There's multiple ways to get at me sometimes. But if we break it full apart, then it might be easier to sort of do the next step. So what am I getting out of this thing? Make all of them equal to zero. All right, so what's the first thing that I should set equal to zero? X. Yeah, absolutely. Making sure y'all grab that guy. So that's a common thing people do is they forget about. It's a little single X over there. This is a potential solution. The other thing is what X is a positive five. If I add that, and this is going to be the X is the negative five. Mm -hmm. Does that match up with what we had? We had a cubic. So definitely go and count your solutions, right? Make sure you're getting your same amount of solutions that you have uh, powers of. Those things should match up. There might be multiplicities, right? But we can count the multiplicities, and the multiplicity should count it. OK, G. Oh, man, that's almost like the easiest one, I feel like, maybe. x to the third equals x. What's the first step? Subtract the x over. We want to subtract the x over. So x to the third minus x equals 0. I feel like this is pretty similar to that previous one. They both have an X in them. So if I factor out an X, what do I get? X squared minus one. Mm -hmm. What about that thing? Is that apart anymore? Yeah, I guess x minus plus one, x minus one. Okay, so this is looking pretty similar to that previous problem. I'm getting a zero, a minus one, and a plus one out of this. Mm -hmm. All right. Find the domain of these things. How do I find the domain of a square root? What's the restriction? Is more like a question. X is greater than zero. Uh, can it be equal to zero? Can we have a square root of zero? Yes. Yeah. Zero. Zero. So it's greater than or equal to. What is greater than or equal to zero?
What has to be greater than or equal to zero? I mean, I'd say zero, but zero is only equal to zero. What's the thing in, in this equation that has to be greater than or equal to zero? 2x plus 5. The thing in the square root, which is the 2x plus 5. All right, so if you can set this up, this is the important thing with the domain restrictions, right? We take whatever's in the square root, we say that has to be greater than or equal to zero. Now we're just solving for x. So if I subtract 5 over and I divide by 2, this is my domain. All right, so the next one, how am I getting my domain in this one? I'm dividing by things here is the important thing. So what do I do when I divide by things? I say the denominator, which is the denominator here is X. And I say that can not equal zero. And not equal zero. So X cannot equal zero, anything else? Plus two cannot equal zero. Yeah, x plus two cannot be zero. So if we solve x plus two cannot be zero, x cannot be the negative two. So these are my two domain restrictions here. And those are the two things I'm looking for. And the last one, what is my domain? What's my domain restriction there? If we have exponents, what can our, our domain not be? Think about the graph maybe. How far left and right does that thing go? Uh, all real numbers? Yeah, it's everything. That's all real numbers. There are no restrictions. If it's not a square root, if it's not a dividing, if it's not a log, it's probably gonna be all real numbers. Most likely, right? There's no restriction. What do I say, like log of x plus 2? This is the other restriction we learned recently, right? So, oh, it's been too much time. But these would have to be greater than 0. Ah, I can't write the right symbol. You have to set the thing inside the log greater than 0, not including. So uh, the, the big kind of difference between logs and, like, what, square roots is that you can include the 0 in the square root. You can't include the 0 in the log. All right, so what is my domain here? And I guess you could give it as an inequality. I probably want to do it with an interval, huh? What's my domain? How do I do negative, that? Yeah. Negative three infinite. Negative three is often. I look here, I look left, and I look right. I look bottom and I look top, and what is my range here? How far down does this go? Negative uh, infinity. Yep, and how far up does it go? Intervals of increase. So I talked a little bit about this before. What do I really want to mark off if I do intervals of increase, decrease? Put the turning points. Point. Yeah, turning points, the vertices. Put a tick mark by those if it helps you. So what's my interval of increase here? Look at this. Negative three, negative one. Negative three, two minus one is my increase. And my decrease is Andy? Yeah, minus one to infinity. Local extrema. Maximum. Do I have any local max? 
Now, this is the one where you're like, look at y quantities. So let's get a really confusing. Let's look at only x quantities. Let's look at only y quantities. Here we go. What is my local extrema? Is there a max here? Yeah, two. Max of two. Is there a min? No. Mm -hmm. So when we do local, we don't include those endpoints, right? Yeah, so there is no min. What's my max here? What's my min? Absolutely. What's my absolute max? It's two again. What's my min? Negative infinity? It's going off to minus infinity. If it's going off to minus infinity, what does that mean about my limit? There is none. None, yeah. There's none. Not available. Okay. Finding intercepts. If I want to find x intercepts, that means my y is equal to. I hope this is the first thing that pops in your head. X intercept means y is equal to. Zero. Zero. And y intercept means x is equal to. Zero. So these are the first things like I hope you pop pop in your brain. I think the y intercept is probably easier one to find if I want to plug in zero to my x. I think this is giving me a minus 10. So zero minus 10 would be what? My y-intercept. And the other way around is if I plug in zero to my y and find my x-intercept. So this is the one that you might have to approximate. Uh, but we're doing the square root property on five. Oops, if I do square root of, yeah, get out of the matrix. Square root of five is somewhere around 2.236. What do they say to round two? Oh, never mind. It says no decimal approximations. There we go. Sorry. If we graph this thing, we might want to know the decimal approximation, right? If we want the exact, this is the exact. Woo. Wait, 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 wait. This is my y-intercept. This is part of my x-intercept. I should really give them the full point. So I have two x-intercepts. One's occurring at a negative root 5, and one's occurring at a positive root 5. If I want the point, it's that comma zero. Uh, find inverses that so we're at. No, find the for the quadratic point function of uh, this thing. Find the vertex. So do you remember how to find the x-coordinate of a vertex if we have something in standard form? That's something you might have to pull out of your memory. And we're hitting right at time, but I'm going to keep going. What is that formula? That's the one you need to remember. Negative b over 2a. So you got to have to commit this to memory somehow. We want to find that vertex. We want to find x equals minus b over 2a. We do minus b over 2a. That's a minus of a minus 2 over 2 times a minus 1. Woo, so we got to get these negative signs correctly. This is 2 over a minus 2. Is that what I'm saying? Or a minus 1. I got my x. This is really the one thing you have to memorize here. The other thing, it just kind of falls from what our definitions are. How do I find my y-coordinate when I have an x-coordinate and a function? Well, was it in some long um, 
equation as well, some long formula. There's probably some long formula that they, they could give you, but that's not what I want to do. There's an easier way. If I have an X coordinate and I know my function, you how do I get a Y? In. I plug it in. So I'm plugging in minus one into my function. I do minus of a minus one squared. And now we have another headache with the negative signs, but there we have go. I think there's like, whew. so let's do this correctly with the negative signs. There are two, three negative signs. Overall, this should be negative. When I square this thing, it becomes positive and I tack another negative on there. This should become plus two and a minus five. What is this? Minus six plus two is a minus four. Does that seem right? Mm -hmm. And so if I want to know what my vertex is here, it is minus one, minus four. I put those two things together, my X coordinate, my Y coordinate. We call this H and we call this thing K sometimes, right? Those were the specific points. Express that in vertex form. Oh, man, they're giving you the vertex form even. Look at that. So what does my vertex form look like? What's my A? That's the first thing I got to figure out. What is that A out in front? The Y. Mm -hmm. The Y intercept, I think. No, the y intercept should be this k. Okay. What number am I getting for a? That's the first coefficient on the original equation, right? Yeah. So negative one? Yeah, remember this is an a, b, c, right? So it is the same a that is up there. This looks like x minus h. Should look like x. And plus one? Mm -hmm. This is my H, this is my K. So this one should be plus one. This one out here should be a minus four. Minus four. So this one is opposite. This one's the same, right? Questions about that? I think the important thing is to know, to memorize this, right? If you memorize this, the other thing you have to remember is to plug it into your function to find your y-coordinate. If you do those two things, you can find your vertex. If you can find your vertex, you can find your vertex form with your h and your k. Your a is the same thing. Write an equation for each of these graphs. What is this, 10? Oh, man. Why is this? Can we do this? Um, do you remember how to do this? Okay, this is a negative value because uh, it's the negative slope. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be negative. Um, let's see here. So how do we find our slopes? Yeah, because it's hard for me to see those points. Uh, so let's see, one, two. That's uh, negative two. Yeah, you're going down two over one. Yep, it's minus two. Yeah. And then the other important thing is to attach what here? X. Don't forget your X. And then we have to do plus B, which is plus three. Three. Yep. So we're counting down to remember our slopes, how to find your slope. And then the other thing is how to find your y-intercept, right? And how to put it into an equation. These, are they making these complicated with a different coefficient? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty complicated. So that's gonna be x squared. Or maybe it might be negative x squared because it's pointing down. Yep. Um, so I think the easiest way is to plug these into vertex form. Okay. And so to plug it into vertex, we need to know our hk, our vertex. 
So what's my vertex here? Negative two. Negative two, comma. Four. Four. And so I go and plug that back in, and it looks like y equals a. x minus h is x plus two squared, and we're adding four for the k. Now this, if you could get this amount, I think you'd probably be pretty good. I don't, I'm not, I don't remember what I have exactly on the, the final, but I don't think I did anything quite this hard. The next step is we still need to solve for A. So if we look at this thing, how do we solve for A? Well, we have to get rid of everything else that's there that is a variable. So I need to plug in something for X and Y. How do I plug in something for X and Y? What do I have to do? Uh, pull points off the graph. Pull points off the graph. So minus one, three, I think is the one that I'm going to go with. It looks like it's going to So minus one comma three is what I want to plug in. I'm plugging in a point to solve for A, and then I'm going to go plug A back in to get my equation. So I almost have my equation, I just need to solve for A. Three is my y. A is the thing I want to solve for. X is a minus one. And I have plus four. This is three. This is two minus one is one squared. A and one squared plus four. And if I subtract four, this is going to give me one is equal to A or A is equal to minus one. So now I'm taking this, I say Y equals a minus one, X plus two squared plus four. Almost cutting into my equation there. I'm plugging that negative one back in for the A. Okay. C. Same thing, so I'm going to go over this real quick. It's the same approach. So y equals ax minus h squared plus k. And so what we want to do is plug in our vertices, our vertex. This is x. My vertex looks like 3 comma 4. So this looks like x minus 3 squared plus 4. If I want another point, 0, 7 is probably the point I'm going to plug in. 7 is equal to a times 0 minus 3 squared plus 4. This looks like 7 equals uh, minus 3 squared plus 4. And I'm going to go with 3 is equal to a by 9. So if I divide both sides by 9, a is going to be 3 ninths or 1 third, I believe. And so now I got to go plug one third back into this thing. Y equals one third. X minus three squared plus four. All right. Diver jumps from a rock and they give us that equation for their trajectory. What is the height in feet? What is the maximum height that they are going to obtain? So how do we find the max height on this thing? We have to find the vertex. Vertex. And if we do the vertex, the thing that you need to remember is x equals. Someone say it that didn't say it already. Negative b divided by 2a. All right. There we go. We need to know our x. We need to know our y. If we want to know the x, x is a minus b over 2a. Minus b is minus 4 over 2a, which is 2 times minus 1.2. This is not going to give me an even pretty thing, is it? What does that give me? 
1.667 or 5. I guess you could do 40 over 24 and divide them by 8. It's probably what you'd be doing if you did it by hand. But we should be getting 5 thirds out of this thing. What is that telling me? Is that the maximum height? Oh, they're not doing this by time. That's weird. I know. Okay. Anyway, this is telling me actually what horizontal distance. So this is the first time I think they changed that to horizontal. Distance. I know that's time. that's really weird. It's okay. We're still going to solve it the same though. If we want vertical distance, what do we have to do with this number? Or if we want the height, what are we doing with this number? We get into the. Uh, we are plugging it into the equation to find the height. We have an equation that will find the height if we plug in an x value. So now that's what we're doing. Minus 1.2 and then 5 squared plus 4 times 5 thirds. We have a plus 35. Running out of room here, but I'm going to squeeze it in there. Now I'm definitely doing this in my calculator minus 1.2, and I'm going to do 5 over 3 and whoo, square it <laughs> plus 4 times 5 over 3 plus 35. Adds give me 38.333. And so I'm probably going to run it 30.33 and got to tell me what they're talking about here. I think it's feet, right? Is that what we're talking about? Feet. That's a lot of feet. That's what, like 19 people's worth of feet? <laughs> Everyone's got two feet. Y'all do realize that's where a foot comes from, right? Is probably your foot. You know they measure like horses and hands. Did you know that? So that's a metric too. <laughs> yeah, there was some kind of ancient, uh, um, like the ark that uh, Noah built was used some measuring technique where you'd use your forearm uh, the cubits. or something. Maybe that's what I it think was. it was in cubits is what they measured it in. It's or your forearm like or something. Oh yeah, uh, yeah but yeah, that, like like feet used to not be the same or consistent throughout whatever town you're going to. You'd have to convert to whatever the heck they were doing. It was like different from place to place, and then they finally figured out, hey, we should probably unify this as like a <laughs> this is common metric. You know, it's like uh, let's make them all the same at some point. But yeah, that was definitely a thing that happened. They weren't all the same. Uh, so I think we answered this one right. Find the maximum height. What we really want to do is find the vertex. Uh, we want to find the x coordinate of the vertex, which gave us like horizontal. Usually it's going to be time. So this one's a little bit different than what we've been solving. But it doesn't really matter too much. So if we run out five thirds of a foot, what we're going to be up is 38.33 feet, right? That is the highest it's going to go. Find asymptotes of these guys. So what's my asymptote here? X is equal to, that would be my vertical asymptote. I think that's the easier one to get at probably. I was trying to do the quick one. What's it doing? How do we find asymptotes here? Vertical asymptotes. Uh, you just use the denominator for those, right? So the denominator equal to zero. If we set the denominator equal to zero, what am I getting out of that? X is equal to a? 
Negative three. Minus three. If I do it here, the x is equal to. So I'm just going to go across and find the vertical asymptotes real quick. Yeah, I really should have added it. Minus one. Minus one. That's probably what you should do. What's my vertical asymptote on this one? Uh, two. Two. And what are my vertical asymptotes on this one? Four and one. Yep, yeah, four and one. So we want to find the vertical asymptote. The step is to factor the denominator if it's not already factored. Set it equal to zero and solve. That's where my vertical asymptote is coming from. Horizontal asymptote. That's the weird thing. What are we looking at for horizontal asymptote? Uh, the degree of the variable and the the, the variable. both parts. Yeah. So if I wanted to write this first one in descending order, that might help you to get it. But what about the degree on that first? What do we notice about these degrees? Same. They are the same? So what are we doing if they are the same? And this is the one that requires probably the most work out of all of them, but it's not a whole lot. Divide them by their coefficients. We got to look at the coefficients and take the coefficient here. So y equals minus 4 over 1. Minus 4 should be your horizontal asymptote here. So if they are the same power, we are dividing the coefficients. Here, I don't have this distributed, but if I did distribute it, it would still be an x squared term down here. So I'm at squares down here. I'm at constants up here. Well, what does that mean? What is my asymptote when that happens? If it is larger on bottom is what this scenario is. If it's increasing really fast on the bottom, what is my asymptote? Y equals zero. This is the zero. If we get like one over a million, right, that's almost zero. If I go one over a billion, that's even closer to zero. We just get, keep on getting closer and closer to zero. The last one, it is larger on top. It's got a cube on top and a square on bottom. What is my horizontal asymptote? It's none. Yeah, none. And then the last one, the upper cost of operating this thing is we found the function already. Oh man, this one's almost too easy. I'm just making up this one. How many workers can the factory have if its daily budget is 2,000? So you're going to have to ask yourself, where am I plugging in that 2,000? I guess is what you have to do. Where does that 2,000 get plugged in? Is, is basically the question, right? Uh. It would be 200 plus 85x equals 2,000, right? Yeah, the important thing to acknowledge is that is an f of x value. I got to plug that into my f of x or my y value. I'm solving for x. So I subtract 200. And I got to do 1, 800, 95, genie. And divide by 85. Oh, man, did I even hit? Okay, good. I can't remember if I hit the quarter or not. Uh, how many workers can the factory have if its daily budget is that amount? So I'm getting something like x equals 21.176. So how many workers would you say that if, you, if your boss asked you that question and you give him a 0.176, he's probably going to look at you a little funny. Or she. But what should you probably say? 21 workers. 21 workers. Absolutely. We're not going to be able to hire 22, right? It's not in the budget. We can hire 21 and a little bit over. You probably want a little bit slack with your budget anyway. So 
The next thing is you sketch a graph of the function for up to 10 workers. All right. So maybe important points to have is right, zero, five, and 10. But if I plug in zero, I'm going to get what? Zero plus 200, 200, 200. Uh, so you should know how to graph things, and you should know how to get the axis and the scaling right. I'm probably not going to tell you. But you should be able to plot points, right? Uh, if I plug in five, what do I get? 200 plus 85 times five. And... So they're going to be 850 plus 200. That's going to get 1050. And so we should be able to plot those points. What are they doing in those? Uh, one of the things is maybe your axis. If I have like 10 of them and I've got to get to so 1050. If we're going to divide 1050 by 10 to each axis. This might give you a sort of idea of what your scaling needs to be, right? Which is what one of five. I would probably go by 150, if I'm being honest, just to make it nice and round. This is what they did in the back. I don't want to spend all my time plotting these points. But we should get five and uh, it's five, six twenty-five, right? We should see these points on there. We should see zero, two hundred, and ten and ten fifty should be the last thing that's on here. What I what I don't like is that they didn't label the axis, but yeah, they should really label the axis. These were what, workers, budget and dollars. The important thing is to start at zero here, yeah, right? If we're going to start here at zero, if we're going to here, there, there's no breaks in between like your zero and the first number that's happening here. Sometimes people like want, want to leave a break in there or something. They'll go like zero, 15 or something, right? Right here and 15, 16, 17. Like don't do giant jumps like that. It puts your graph way off. It makes it inaccurate. All right, so that's it. I think we've gone over time. Any questions over anything that you might have for the final tomorrow? I think that was a pretty good review. Is Hopefully. there a particular section that's going to be like more focused on than on any others or anything like that? I would say like it's, I mean, it's, it's cumulative. So it's kind of bounces around a bit. I would say like this, this review does a pretty good job of what it's probably going to look like. Okay. It's like a little bit from here, a little bit from there. Okay. So covering this should cover the te the pretty much the subjects on the test. It should should correlate pretty good. Okay.